And so the, the damages that are done to the horse via this, uh, I wouldn't even call it training because it's not training, it's uh, com complete horse abuse is what it is. Uh, but all, all of the studies that have been done clearly indicate as to uh, how damaging this is to a horse. Google, but there was a study done where the life expectancy of a dressage horse was set to eight years of age. And, uh, is, uh, that's mind blowing. The horses live uh, 25 to 30 years of age. And here, dressage is supposed to be this enhancer of the horse's beauty, both physically and mentally. And here is the lifespan being cut to that. And, uh, so we have a uh, an awful situation that's been going on now for almost 20 years. And this is fully, fully condoned and supported by the FEI and the Spanish Riding School. World champion, a title that he has held twice. And now he's 15 flying changes, one after the other, every stride. Beautifully done. The scientists at Live Pet are hard at work solving our cancer epidemic. They have the most promising cancer trials going on now with pet clinics around the country that I have ever seen. You can see the promising cancer research and trials going on on some of the past shows that I've done. The links are below. While working with C60 and other ingredients, these talented scientists developed a hair growth serum that really works. They sat on it for years. After all, cancer is their focus. But they now realize how much the profits from this product could really help their cancer research. So the C360 hair growth product was launched. C360 hair growth is specifically designed to revive your hair growth by targeting hair follicles and restarting your hair growth cycle. C60, the active ingredient in C360 hair growth, reactivates hair follicles that have stalled due to hereditary hair loss, physical conditions, or environmental factors that may affect follicle production. You will begin to see visible results using C360 hair growth within three to six weeks. Buy today knowing that your future hair growth will help fund very promising cancer research. See more at the link below. Welcome to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall. This show is taking a little bit of a different direction, but you know, it all ties back together and it's, it's an amazing story about the Olympics, about horses, about the ultra, ultra wealthy and abuse of horses and abuse of young girls training for the Olympics with trainers all over the world and the abuse that they encounter. Hector Carmona comes onto the show and he talks about the area of horse dancing and how they have, over the past two decades, since the early 90s, this new way of training horses that literally cuts their life in by a third because of the abuse that they suffer during these practices. And, and then also how the cesspool of culture has, has, has girls being sexually abused and people covering up. It has so much money. He's been trying to expose the crimes against horses and against these young women. And he's got death threats, and he's, it's just been an, an awful experience for him. He's in Sweden, and, and fortunately, he's in Sweden where the court system and the judges all know what's going on, and they support him, and they agree with him. And he'll tell that whole story. And then he's going to stick around after and talk about his understanding of the Princess du of Dubai and how she has been trying to escape Dubai and why. The reason why she he knows this story is because 
the Queen of Dubai has been the president of the Horse Association. He explains that, and she has stepped down recently. And leaders of different countries and their children are all active in the sport. The ultra wealthy, the royalty from around the world, they're all active. And so he has gotten to know her and her story, and the people have been trying to help her. So he stays around for my Patreon patrons to tell the story of this princess. It's a it's it's a sad story of of why she wants to get out and so forth. So that's for my patrons. The link is below. But let's get into my interview with Hector Carmona. Hello, Hector. Thank you so much for joining the program today. Well, thank you for having me, Sarah. I, I really appreciate you having me on uh, to tell this uh, horrific story uh, that involves horses. Uh, and uh, so I, I thank you. Well, it's it's a broad story. It involves the abuse of horses and young girls who are training with these horses and high levels in different countries, the head of Dubai and the head of the, you know royalty and, and so forth, and the Olympic Committee, these trainers. Can you give us some background on what sport, what we're talking about, and what kind of abuse that we're talking about? Okay. Um, well, uh, we, we can go back to the, the uh, uh, dressage is uh, the sport, uh, um, and it is considered ballet on a horse, uh, um, uh, dancing with a horse, uh, um, uh, very similar also to uh, gymnastics uh, done on horseback. And um, it, it, um, the origins of it go back to uh, 430 odd BC by a Greek soldier by the name of Xenophon. And uh, so he was, uh, as a soldier, the, the horses, of course, uh, were going to the wars and he loved his horses a, a great deal. So when not at war, uh, he sought ways of being able to ride them in harmony and uh, producing national that they would do on their own, if loose in a field. And so then uh, that was the where dressage began. And through the centuries, there, there have been many great horsemen who have continued to develop uh, uh, dressage uh, with the philosophy of increasing the, the harmony um, and understanding uh, the horse's movement, understanding the horse's psyche, uh, its temperament, character, uh, and its physical abilities. And, and so then what we have is a uh, harmonization between a, a, a human and an animal, a horse. And then, uh, of course, the horse has been uh, uh, immeasurable for, for the, uh, the, uh, uh, the humans in helping get humans to the point that we are uh, since, since uh, um, oh, it's uh, 6,000 years back when the horse was dedicated, uh, the horses have been involved in countless wars, also with, agri with the agriculture or pulleys from the forest and so on. So the, the, the horse has been invaluable uh, help uh, to the humans uh, um, for 6,000 years. Um, and so it is quite a, an interesting relationship that uh, has only um, only the horse uh, uh, has provided uh, uh, to to the to humans. Um, and so then we have the, this this uh, dressage, which became an Olympic sport in uh, in the twenties, or I should say the FEI was in an organization that was established in 1921, which uh, was set up with the idea of protecting the horse in sport. That was its sole purpose. And so it set up a, a, a rule book with guidelines on the training and uh, uh, what to do um, in sport. There are judges that evaluate the performances and the performance 
should be an indicator as to what the training is like at home. And so in other words, a horse is performing uh, these patterns, doing these intricate movements, and uh, the judges are looking for the horse to be understanding these movements and to do them with grace and ease. In keeping with my promise to provide the absolute best products I can find that I take personally and would give my family, I'm really excited to show you their Advanced NMN, which has been proven to dramatically increase your energy and much more. As discussed in multiple shows with Ken Schwartz and Cliff High, NAD is a great supplement to enhance C60's effectiveness, but even on its own, NMN can pass through cell membranes and join with other NMNs to then convert into NAD+, making it much more effective than other NAD supplements on their own. NAD and NMN has been scientifically shown to increase DNA repair in cells. It has also been shown to promote the creation of new mitochondria that can replace our old mitochondria, and it can also increase the removal of damaged mitochondria in our cells. It maintains stem cells' usefulness and ability to regenerate. It also has been shown to reverse age-associated expression of genes involved with inflammation. It does this and a lot more, and it does this at an affordable price of $37.95. Click on the link below to find scientific studies and to learn more about this amazing product. Yeah, and you train people to do this, right? You're an Olympic trainer. Well, my father was an Olympic coach, and we had one of the first massage centers in USA uh, that was established in 1966. And then um, I myself was selected by Dr. Klimka. He's a six-time Olympic gold medalist. Uh, he saw me competing on a young horse uh, when I lived in USA. And, and so he asked if I wanted to train with him. I've also trained with a youngest graduate from the Spanish riding school, Hubert Rohrer. Um, because we have the Spanish riding school is an institution that was uh, uh, established in, in 1735. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, th- th- this institution is so highly looked upon as uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, what it does uh, with the horses and what it provides to the pu- public, which uh, through exhibitions, it performs exhibitions around the world, and uh, it, it has a, a, a global audience uh, of incredible size. Uh, Walt Disney made a movie of them in the 60s, and uh, the Spanish Riding School is, is so admired that George Patton saved them in World War II. Is this, would it be fair to say that this sport is something that royalty and the wealthy like it's more common yes well in that in oh the 16th 17th 18th century um in between wars and such uh, the horses were paraded in front of royalty um and actually even in front of hitler uh they they had uh, uh the horses dancing in front of him and in front of the tables. And, and so th- this was uh, uh, something that was uh, uh, held in very high esteem uh, by royalty, as, as you're saying, yes. So now what is going on in this sport? And you're telling me that these horses are being mistreated. Well, How? what's happened yeah. is, uh, what's happened is, in the 90s, in the 90s, we started to see a, a different type of training which did not follow whatsoever the rule book, and it became known as row cure. Um, later, the term was changed to LDR is the abbreviation. It was changed in 2010. And uh, th- this form of training is based on dominance of a horse. What it does, it takes away the horse's neck by placing the head of the horse either on its chest or on its shoulders. 
Um, and then the horse is unable to have its own natural balance. Uh, a horse uses its neck for all of its movements, whether it's getting up, getting down, or uh, in, in the old days from fleeing from uh, predators and such. All its, in all of its movements, it relies on its neck. And so this uh, uh, barbaric uh, method, it takes away the horse's neck. And so the horse is completely at the mercy of that rider. And its vision is limited to essentially its forefeet. Uh, there have been so, so many studies done uh, by countless vets all over the world with endoscopic uh, uh, studies done. Um, also uh, on the, uh, uh, the skeleton, also on the ligaments. And so the, the damages that are done to the horse via this, uh, I wouldn't even call it training because it's not training. It's uh, com complete horse abuse is what it is. Uh, but all, all of the studies that have been done clearly indicate as to uh, how damaging this is to a horse. Uh, to the point where there was a study done in Denmark, which has been removed now uh, from Google, but there was a study done where the life expectancy of a dressage horse was seven to eight years of age. And, uh, which is, uh, that's mind-blowing. The horses live uh, 25 to 30 years of age. And here, dressage is supposed to be this enhancer of the horse's beauty, both physically and mentally. And here is the lifespan being cut to that. Um, and uh, so we have a, an awful situation that's been going on now for almost 20 years. And this is fully, fully condoned and supported by the FEI and the Spanish Riding School. Well, what's interesting to me is, again, the Clintons are involved somehow in this, and it all changed once they got involved and started funding it. And the Clinton Foundation, it's a, it's can you explain a, well, that? What um, Bill Clinton and uh, the ruler of the Bai, Sheikh al Matum, have been very, very close friends for some 25, if not longer, years. And so then, uh, um, and the ruler of the Bai, he's uh, very involved with race horses as well as endurance horses. His wife became a three term president of the FEI. This was at the uh, beginnings of this entire horrific period. And so then, uh, this relationship between the Sheikh. And Bill Clinton became, it went into the Clinton Foundation, where monies were being sent to the Clinton Foundation or from Dubai, from the uh, uh, UAE. Also, I have here, um, there is Saudi Arabia, Australia, Norway, Netherlands, Kuwait, Qatar. Uh, the UAE, um, I mean, we're, we're talking well over a hundred million dollars. Uh, also, it, inv it involves one of the wealthiest people in Denmark, uh, Shell Christensen. He owns Lego Toys, and then he is very, very involved with the, uh, with the Clinton Foundation. And so then there is tremendous amounts of money that is pouring in into the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Initiative. It, it, it even goes, it gets even crazier because there is the, um, what's known as the Postal Code Lottery. This is very, very popular here in Europe, uh, the lottery is. And so then uh, the, as an example, the Agricultural Department of Holland which essentially consists of the horse business, is a huge contributor to the Clinton Foundation. And, and so then the, uh, it, it's hard to pinpoint an exact figure as to uh, how many millions, but it exceeds well over $100 million that have gone into the, the, the Clintons 
or the Clinton Initiative uh, uh, through, through people that are involved within the FEI and the Spanish Writing School. And of, of all this, Sarah, I, I do have links to, uh, to everything that I say. I will include it here in the show description for people. Okay, yeah. Now, I got to ask yeah. you, uh, is that money still flowing to the Clintons? Or since she lost the election, did a lot of that stop? It, it, a lot of it has stopped, yes. It, it's true. Um, and then it's it's been difficult. Uh, it, it, it's been a real painstaking uh, process to try to find exact numbers within the, the Clinton Foundation. They never give you exact numbers. And uh, a lot of times uh, the, the monies are bundled in uh, on, on a per country basis. And so then it's, it's a, um, they're, they're, I, they are quite, quite good at hiding exact figures. Uh, they, they've done a very, very good job at that. Uh, a person who knows a great deal about this is Charles Ortel. He has studied the Clinton Foundation uh, in depthly. And um, um, so he is one that can probably provide uh, more accurate figures, although the, the Figures that I do have in the links, I mean, th this is coming directly from the Clinton Foundation website. So the, the, the numbers are there. They're, they are there. And then it, it is true what you say. It, it is true what you say is that since he lost the election, um, a lot of their donations have dried up. Um, uh, they certainly have. But uh, as far as the horse abuse is concerned, it was very, very interesting when uh, Princess Haya resigned in, uh, a few months into her third term, the next president, Ingmar DeVos, the first thing that he does is he meets with the Prince of Bahrain. And, and so then, uh, uh, and the Prince of Bahrain is not involved with horses. And so um, this, this is, uh, the, there's money that is, is just flowing left and right uh, uh, here within the FEI from very wealthy individuals uh, all over the world. Why do you think the abuse started at about this time? What would be the motive for changing this whole thing and uh, being abusive to well, horses? It's not, is it, is, it a, is it prettier? Is it more effective? I mean, why are they doing this? Well, what happens, um, you, you see, what happens is... Uh, the breeding of horses has improved uh, dramatically through the uh, through the years, and so then we have uh, horses that are being bred uh, to be incredible dancers, if if we can say that, or incredible gymnasts, athletes, and, and so then what happens is that you can take a young horse and uh, through this dominating uh, process, which the horses are literally in their stall. They're tied in the stall where their head, with their heads to their chest, which uh, you have photos. How long do they sit like this? Oh, hey, th this is indefinite period. This can go on for hours and hours. Uh, a young horse, when it started under saddle, is already in its mind. Its neck and head is already positioned practically in between its forelegs. What does it do to them mentally when they're permanently in this position when they're in their resting state? Um, there is a term called learned helplessness, uh, which came, uh, I guess it, it, it was in the 60s or 70s with uh, uh, that uh, psychologist, they came up with that term. And, and what it really means is that the uh in this case with the horse it is completely helpless unable to defend itself and so it is at the total mercy of itself uh, of of the rider and so um the horse is very afraid to raise its neck uh because if it does it will be punished now severe bits are used 
in order to keep that horse in that position. Uh, severe bits, uh, auxiliary reins are used, which only uh, create more leverage. And this leverage is to keep the neck buried down towards the chest of the horse. And this goes against the principle of having a love relationship with the horse in harmony. I mean, there's totally. this totally and the, gets the, the, the harmony. The, crazy, the craziest thing there, uh, Sarah, is that th there are very, very clear rules and guidelines in the FEI rule book. And this goes completely against what is written in the rule book, even, even in looking at a single photo. Uh, it does not comply to the diagrams in the rule book. And so then here we are in the Olympics as an example. And the uh, dressage would be the only sport in the Olympics that does not have any rules since the rule book does not exist anymore. There, 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 therefore, there are no rules to this dressage except for, except for what the judges feel is appropriate. And as far as what is appropriate, I'll give you a very, very good example of a judge by the name of Barry Marshall. He was due to retire three, and, and uh, he had one more competition to judge uh, a couple of days before the actual, one day before the actual competition, he was told by Olympic judges that he must give out these certain scores to the, this rider in these specific movements. And so then, uh, of course, he did not. He came out public in Facebook with this. This happened this past December. And so also it's been found out that the FEI and the judges Judges are accepting the, it, it was, uh, it's written in German, donations, in other words, bribes. The, the, there's, uh, the judges are being bribed to give certain scores to individuals. And these individuals are the ones that are using uh, this method. And, and, well, nowadays, practically everybody is using this method because otherwise you, you will never... Uh, uh, succeed in competition. And so it, what, what it's become, uh, what it's done to the sport, what it's done to the art is that everybody, everybody has really sold out on the reasons that they originally got involved with the horse, which is the love of the horse. And so they have sold out for ribbons, gold medals, or of course, uh, acquiring a rather substantial bank account. Um, and by a large bank account, um, there are estimates that here in Europe alone, the industry, the horse industry, is that it's approximately one hundred billion billion dollars. And and they live so much like a third of their lifetime is cut in half. Why do you think that? This all started back in the early 90s. Is it just a coincidence well, that the Clinton Foundation wasn't at the same time? Or is that when it just started getting really corrupt and a different mindset culture came in? Uh, well, I, I believe um, uh, what, what happened was uh, is that in order to become, for a writer, for a writer to become a... Uh, a uh, a good rider that takes time they have to understand their balance and and so people used to be on the lunge line uh, doing lots of exercises with their arms with their legs eyes closed and such uh, this does not happen anymore and, and so then practically anybody can be riding a horse and competing in a relatively short period of time and so then if the horse is turned into a machine, that even makes it easier for anybody to be able to do this. And so then uh, um, the horses are being sold for tremendous amounts of money, uh, but we're losing so many horses. Uh, they, they have uh, young horse championships, uh, world championships every year. Um, and to get to these championships, every country has qualifiers. 
And so, but by the time the world championships for the young horses come up, uh, and by the time they're concluded, uh, some 80 odd percent of the horses you will never hear from again, uh, never again, uh, which is these are the best, best horses for that particular year. And this happens year in and, and year out. And what happens to them? Uh, a, a lot of them, a, a lot of them, yes, a lot of them will end up with uh, uh, severe enough injuries uh, that they will be euthanized. And then, of course, the vets are making money off of this. The insurance companies, everybody is making money off of this. Uh, and you, you see, um, uh, horses are, are expendable, just like humans are with the, our endless wars. Uh, the horses looked upon the same way. It's just a commodity. It's it's uh, that's all it is. It's a commodity, and so then if uh, horses are dying or uh, broken down, uh, where they're not serviceable anymore, well, if they're not serviceable anymore, they are put to sleep, um, and so then what we have is a complete uh, uh, an, to an institution, the FEI whose sole purpose for its existence was to protect the well-being of the horse, and instead it's doing the exact opposite. Well, and that so, seems like the world is just upside down right now. Can you, can you, it, if, it is. You've been fighting this for a while, but you've been, they've gone after you hard, right? Can you explain what the ramifications have been to you for fighting this? So, um, well, I, I have. Uh, it was just a, a week and a half ago where uh, I had another death threat. Uh, four individuals came to where I live and two got out of the car and uh, um, they started to say things. But uh, um, I chased them back in the car rather quickly. It was tr trying to intimidate me because uh, of late uh, um, I've been rather active on Facebook and Twitter, and so this story is starting to gain some some traction. And so um, I, I've had I I don't even know how many death threats. I have no idea. Uh, there's it just th keeps coming. I'm yeah. so sorry that you have. And that. whether it's whether it's where I live or also at competitions that has taken place, I have to watch if I, if I'm at a, if I go to use the toilet that where I go to uh, when I'm out, I make sure that I'm in a crowd that I'm never by myself um, at places um, that my car has been blown up. My apartment has been ransacked. Also my visa has been denied three times from entering USA three times with no not a single explanation not and the, the last time the last time security surrounded me within three minutes when did that happen how many years um, ago or is it recent that was that was last year this is more it's about a year ago that when that happened simply for fighting and standing up for horses uh, pretty much so. Uh, uh, well, it, it is that, but also it, it involves it involves very very powerful people. The ruler of Dubai, uh, th this man is a total despot. Uh, he just uh, last year kidnapped one of his daughters, uh, Princess Latifa. She was fleeing him, looking for asylum in USA, and they came in uh, international waters. This is international waters on a yacht owned by uh, Hedwig Jaubert. Um, and they showed up with warships and helicopters. And so they took Princess Latifa, her best friend Tina, Yao Hienin, and, and Hedwig. Um, and so they took them back to Dubai. Uh, they let Tina and Hedwig uh, go after two days, but they were threatened. If they opened their mouths, they're easy to find. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, I have spoken a bit with Hedve. Him and I did an interview roughly a month ago uh, together, and he, he's got uh, quite a story. And, and so he, he knows uh, uh, the ruler of Dubai quite, quite well, uh, quite well. This, this man is, uh, uh, he is a complete despot. And so then he is 
associated with Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton is not just a saxophone player uh, that has fun. And, and no, not at all. Uh, what the, the Clinton Foundation, what it is all about is absolutely appalling how they take advantage of victims whether it's AIDS victims, whether it's Haiti, in my case, the horses.